Hey, hey, welcome to lesson number three of the straight line chapter. This one I'm calling gradient equals tan theta. Now this symbol here, it's one of the Greek letters, it's known as theta, and we just use it in maths to represent an angle. So even though I'm calling this a gradient equals tan theta, what I'm really wanting to do is I want to work out the size of the angle between a line and the x-axis. Now most of the time when we do this, what we're wanting is we want the size of the angle between any line that's drawn in, such as this one, and the positive direction of the x-axis, the positive direction being going from left to right. So if you imagine the numbers on the x-axis with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the further over to the right you go, it's going to be positive numbers that you get. So this is the positive direction of the x-axis. So it's this angle that we want to find. So to do that, what you want to do is you want to think, right, well, how would you go about finding the size of that angle? And what you think is, right, well, for a straight line, you can pick any two points on that straight line. And what you could do is you could say, right, well, if I draw in this wee triangle here with my horizontal and vertical line, I would have a right angle in here here and the size of the angle in this triangle is the exact same as the angle between the line and the x-axis. So for any two points on the line, pick two points and then draw in this triangle. The size of that angle is the exact same as the angle between the line and the positive direction of the x-axis. Now to find that angle you may want to think back a couple of years and remember when you wanted to find the size of an angle in a triangle you used Sokatoa. Well for this one here you could just use Tan because you could take the size of the opposite, the length of the adjacent and tan theta would be the opposite over adjacent. What you need to do though is you need to know the length of this line and hopefully you remember the way you can do that is if you knew the points here what you can do to work out the length of this line coming down your vertical line you could subtract your y coordinates and you could work out the length of this line by subtracting the x coordinates. So if you do y2 take y1, it gives you this length. If you do x2 take x1, it gives you this length. So really, the opposite over adjacent is really just y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. Yes, Erin, I can hear you. You're screaming at your computer. It is the gradient. y2 take y1 over x2 take x1 is really your gradient, your gradient formula. So we could say that tan theta equals y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. So really, tan theta equals m. And that brings us to our first main formula for higher, which is m equals tan theta, or in other words, the gradient equals tan theta. So what this means is that if you knew the size of this angle, you could work out the gradient of the line. Or if you knew the gradient of the line, you could work out the size of the angle. Let's try a few examples with that. Well done spotting that, Erin. So example number one. There's the formula there. A line makes an angle of 63.44 degrees with the x-axis. Find the gradient of this line. So to do this then, what you want to do is you're thinking, right, well, the size of your angle is 63.44, so we know theta. We know the angle, and we want to work out the gradient. So if you know the angle, you could just substitute it in to that formula. So the formula, m equals tan theta, gradient equals tan theta, so replace theta with the size of the angle. So m equals tan 63.44, and if you do that, just go to the calculator, press tan, put in 63.44, and then press equals, and it'll give you an answer. The answer it gives you is 2.0, I think it's 2.00. Just round it to one or two decimal places, and that would be your answer. That is going to be the gradient. Let's try a second example. So number two, calculate the size of the angle the line joining points P and Q makes with the x-axis. So this time here, you're wanting the size of the angle, so we know we're going to be using this formula, m equals tan theta, but it's not giving us the gradient, and it's definitely not giving us the angle, that's what we want to find. But what it is giving us is two points. We know P and we know Q. So we could use the gradient formula. 
So the gradient, just putting a small PQ down here, means the gradient of PQ would be y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. If you sub in the values, so you'd have 1 take away 9 over negative 2 take away 3. Just be careful when you are substituting in. Uh, you would end up getting negative 8 over negative 5. The two negatives would make it positive, giving us 8 over 5. So that would be the gradient of this line. Just think as well, because it is a positive uh, number, it's a positive gradient, if you had your x and your y axis drawn terribly here, then it's going to be a line that slopes up from left to right. It's going to be a positive gradient. Okay, so it's going to be going up. It doesn't have to be going through the origin, but it would be going up the way. So we know the gradient, so you can then work out the size of the angle by using m equals tan theta. Or reverse, really, tan theta equals m, because it's theta we want to find. We know m. We can substitute m in. So we can say tan theta equals 8 over 5. From there, if you want to work out theta, think back when you were doing Soka Toa. We want to get rid of tan, so you would do tan to the minus 1, inverse tan. So theta, equal be, would, theta would equal tan to the minus 1 of 8 over 5, which is giving you 57.99 degrees. Again, just do it to one or two decimal places. Yes, and that would be your answer. Last example then, number 3. So with this one, calculate the size of the obtuse angle the line joining these two points makes with the x-axis. So this time it's wanting the size of the angle that this line makes with the x-axis, but it's asking us very clearly to find out the size of the obtuse angle. Let's go through this then. Let's see what we get. So for this example, again, we're asked to, we're asked to find out the angle. We don't know m, but we are given two points. So the first thing you need to do is work out the gradient. So the gradient of PQ, y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. Sub in the values. Again, be very careful when you're doing that. So it's 1 take away 3 over 3 take away negative 2. When you take away a negative, it means you add. Okay, just watch that. Um, that then will give you the negative 2 over 5. For anybody swapping the points around, you would still get the same answer, but you would get 2 over negative 5. It's the same thing. Remember, the negative can go at the top or the bottom, or you can just put it at the side. Either way, it's negative 2 fifths. Okay? So we know the uh, gradient, so then we could work out the angle. So for this, you're thinking tan theta equals m, but when you do this, what you're best doing is ignoring the negative. Think back when you used cast, what we did was we didn't put in the negative, okay? We just put in the positive answer, okay? And then we used cast. So from here, ignore the negative and then work out the size of the acute angle. So do tan to the minus one of two fifths and we're thinking that then is going to be 21.8 degrees. But you've got to remember what you just did. Okay, you worked out the size of the acute angle. We know this line because it's a negative gradient. It's going to be sloping down from left to right. So the line's going to be coming down like this. When we worked out the size of the acute angle with the 21.8, well, you can see that if you have your x-axis, if you've got a line coming down, then this angle here is going to be the acute one. It's the one that's less than 90. So that was 21.8 degrees. And it's the obtuse angle that we were asked to find. Think about how you would find out the size of the obtuse angle. Well done, Matthew just told us. It is 180 minus the 21.8 perfectly right. Well done, Matthew. So, from that, the juice angle would be the 158.2 degrees. It is a very important lesson, this one. It's really the first important new formula that we've learned with higher. Practice these questions, try them, just be very careful if it's asking you for obtuse angles, think about the gradient, if it's positive or negative, it'll show you which way the line will be sloping. So they can be tricky, so take your time with them and try the questions in the book. It is on page 211. Check your answers as you go and think about how well you're getting on with this as well. Enjoy!